Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. We are taking down our old iron golem farm. <laughs> we had to build a new one. I have a little bit of a story um, with what we we're trying to do here. So we we're trying to make this one in indoors that was down here inside the base, right? And it just, I wasn't having any luck with it. I kept trying and trying and trying to um, get the spawnable spaces outside on top of the mountain here to be unspawnable. And I just, I couldn't do it. I don't know why iron golems kept spawning outside. I uh, started off by laying down glass. And oh, first off, sad story. Why I'm not getting into this back is because my silk touch pickaxe was too expensive to repair i can't put mending on it because of that i found out and so now i'm stuck with having to destroy all this glass without a silk touch which is kind of sad in and of itself but you know we got to get back to getting enchanting enchantments going um get our our blaze farm actually up and running this episode so that we can camp that and get uh get books and get things going again but on a good note we do have um a bunch of stuff up here that i can't get um on a good note we do have we do have iron golems coming from our farm that is now up way up top we have a filtering system here that it's filtering out the poppies and make them into bone meal which is really cool really like this design it comes in here what ends up happening comes in here they die goes through a water stream comes up here this has a filter on it of um can i reach it no i can't uh this has a filter on it to only accept iron bars going down and then everything else goes over here sometimes this gets clogged up because uh if i kill things outside sometimes i come down through the through the shoot and yep this contraption of a thing over here doesn't work. Uh, I was trying to do a fishing farm, an automated fisher, AFK fisher, whatever you want to call it, and it just wasn't, it just, and I'm playing on the latest snapshot, and so with the latest snapshot, it just, it doesn't work. They've, they've nerfed it, and uh, this no longer works. Even this setup no longer works. So I, th this worked on the 18A snapshot, I found out, or, or no, 17, 16A. 16a snapshot 20w 16a snapshot this sort of design was working but on the 18a snapshot i've even read in comments of people um that this design this is my own design oh, whoa whoa i saw i saw something um casting uh this is my to an extent this is my own design um the one i saw uh sorry the one I saw didn't use a hopper clock. It used a bunch of repeaters for a clock. I used an etho clock and hopper clock, whatever you want to call it, as my clock source. Um, so yeah, a little bit different. I saw someone else using a hopper clock, but on a different design. So it's, I took sort of two different designs with a hopper clock and put it together. I liked it, thought it was better. So, but it doesn't work. So we got to get rid of it um, and see what happens in, in 1.16 for... Uh, automated fishers i know uh mojang or microsoft whatever you want to call it is trying to nerf it and so we'll see if it comes back and is even plausible in 116 but anyways um because i need to get mending books and i so i either have to go sit there fish and mend i think you can get them from raids i so i did i did see raid farm so i am thinking about potentially doing a raid farm uh, i haven't decided on that yet um if i want to do it i haven't done much research as so it's plausible and it's a farm that is built out there but here's the other thing. This is what I was, oh yeah, villagers, that's a whole nother story too. Uh, I totally messed up on that. Now I have villager galore running around here. Um, maybe not anymore, maybe they all got turned to zombies and died. <laughs> but, so this was my attempt. I Now I gotta go through, I, I can't decide if I wanna wait till I get a silk touch again so I can get all this glass back or if I just wanna break it. But this was my attempt. See, what happened was, is I put glass on everything that that had glass on it before, so yeah, don't freak out. Um, but I had glass on everything uh, over every block, and then I I had torches so that the light level was thirteen or higher or twelve or higher, because what I ended up finding out was golems once they had, once they got a layer of snow on it like that, golems 
still saw that as a spawnable block. And so I was like, oh shoot, now I have to go through and torch everything up and make a light source. Did that. And then they still kept spawning. And so I even went higher than the plus or minus eight that it should be on the on the Z axis or on the Y axis. Um, and it was just like, what the heck? So couldn't figure it out, couldn't get it working correctly. And in all honesty, it looked kind of ugly. I, I don't like it, just having something floating up in the air like that. It's kind of ugly, but, um, and I, wa I wanted to avoid it. I thought about going down with it, but I still might do that. We'll see. We'll see what this forms into. That might eventually end up going down below our base. But I, I don't know if I really want to do that because then it kind of limits a certain area. This villager thing is dominating when it comes to carrots. Uh, if you, this is just from AF King. It's, it's almost full again. I emptied this last night and those guys are still partying hard there. Um, and we have major villagers, which I ended up breaking the block that was holding them in. Yeah. And so they pretty much all got out. This thing was just stacked full. Let's see if we can push these guys out. This thing was just, oh, they're supposed to be small. So we might have to help them out here. Uh, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to, <laughs> gotta go the other way. Gotta help them out by taking this out. There we go. There we go. Now you guys are free. So I let them. I let them out just because I had so many of them uh, accumulating down there that I was like, I need to get rid of them. And so I just I, I figured I can let them go. This is a breeder and it, it keeps on breeding. So if I end up needing more, I can always uh, trap them again and and let them do their thing. <laughs> but as of right now, there's just way too many of them. I didn't need them. I'm not ready to set up any villager trading yet and, and do that, which I will eventually, but just not now. So they're free and I'm, I'm, I'm just keeping it that way. I want the carrots to still come. I might disable it because I'm so far ahead on carrots. Whoa. So, but as of now, that's where we're at. They're just breeding and then they're allowed to get out here and wander. And then at night, I'm assuming they're turning into zombie villagers, but that's okay. I don't really care. So we are gonna go now get this beacon set up because I have enough iron. Oh gosh, it took me forever to, oh, so upsetting. But go get the, the beacon set up. I'm gonna go down to where I've been branch mining, open that up and just start, start insta mining down there. But I might have to go get a silk touch pickaxe, pickaxe first. All right, time to place this beacon. Let's do it. Get some haste too going on here. We got to first now though we have to make a we have to go all the way up sad part here this is gonna be the dumb way to do it the other bad part is <laughs> is i'm digging straight up which is no bueno hopefully there's no lava or anything that we run into above me because i have no way to stop it then while they come back down and do a little bit of mining. The only thing is I don't have a, I don't have an efficiency five pickaxe anymore either. <laughs> With the uh, silk, touch, silk touch, the silk touch one was the only efficiency five pickaxe I had. So the one I'm using, the one, the pickaxe I'm using right now is my old, my old fortune, before I got fortune three, my old fortune two pickaxe um, with efficiency four on it. And my even my fortune three pickaxe that I have in my ender chest, it has only efficiency four in it. Also, I never got efficiency five on all of my pickaxes um, before moving away from the spider farm. Really? <laughs> okay. Cool. Wow, we're way over here. I did not know that. Okay, let's. Uh, I guess, I guess that works, right? We can just do that. That that should work still, right? It should be able to go through water. Let's go down. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it goes through water. I don't know enough about the beacon. Jeez, 
That's a long ways. <laughs> That's a long ways. All right, iron bar. There we go. Let's go. Um, why is it? Why is the haste two not showing up? There we go. There we go. Um, might help if you hit the accept button. <laughs> haste two, haste two. The, there we go. All right. Now does like I said, I don't think I don't think efficiency four gives you. Yeah. You need efficiency five. Dang it. That sucks. Okay, so we have to go. Uh, and while I was digging it out, this is where I was. This is where my branch mine was. Look at that. <laughs> Diamonds are right there. <laughs> is that not funny? Um, but yeah, we have to get efficiency five now because I mean we're not insta mining. This is ridiculous. So we have a beacon. We have a haste two beacon. We have haste two. We're getting it. Now we just need the efficiency five pickaxe. So let's go and do some enchanting over in the Nether. We got the blaze farm running now. Everything's up and going. We got, we made a little bit of modifications. I just had glowstone up there before uh, to enable disable. Now I have buttons, this button right here, down here, and a button up there on the nether fortress level. But it will drop lava in and, and enable disable that, uh, which is great. So then I can come and go as I please and not have them aggro me when I'm up there and they float up. And now I'm starting to use the pathfinding spaces and starting to fill in this. This has to go from here all the way up to there, full of blocks. It's a nine by nine, nine from the edge here over nine that way, nine from here over that way. So it's a little bit more than nine by nine and all the way up, which is what nine and then another six or seven. So by 15, 16, 17, somewhere in there. So we are going to fill in the space, but first I have to, I'm gonna build off a little area right here to do my enchanting. So I can do my enchanting while the blaze spell runner runs, while I put more here, more items here uh, for pathfinding. And I have about 15 smelters or furnaces up there smelting to give me smooth stone because I want this to be filled with smooth stone just because it looks better. So lots of work to do, but we have a blaze spawner that's at least working. There we go. See, now watch. Now they'll pathfind over to here and they'll fall down once they decide they want to come over here. There's a probability and chances of them going other ways to pathfind. Um, but like that one, see how that one just went, that one just went. The more blocks you put over here, the better the pathfinding will be to get them here. So it will just be a work in progress to actually get them to come faster. And the farther they spawn away here, like if they go way over here, then the likelihood of them getting over here is, is higher or is, is less. So the better, the closer they spawn, the better chance they have at actually pathfinding to there. And also the more blocks we have here, once we fill this thing up, they'll have their higher percent chance of actually pathfinding to the correct spot. So got work to do. So good thing we got the spawner, blaze spawner working, blaze farm working. It's going fantastic. But uh, that looks like an issue, doesn't it? A little bit, maybe, kind of, sort of. The interesting part is, so what so what I have going here is, I have a theory here, and I think my theory might be right. But basically what's happening, this is how I do it. I go down here, this is where I, I kill them. But after, you know, after some time has gone on, and I've been AFKing here, and they start to gather up there. And sometimes I... I originally thought that one was getting stuck pathfinding right there and blocking them all. But as you can see, that's not happening. There's nothing at the drop off there that's getting stuck. And so something's just preventing them from pathfinding. What I believe is happening is this layer right here. I made this non spawnable, but non spawnable doesn't mean non pathable. If you want, if that makes sense, right? That I, I believe what's happening is I cleared out this big area and this whole area is supposed to be empty. And then when you built this behemoth of a thing and filled in all these blocks, these blocks right here are supposed to be what determines the pathfinding and what helps them to pathfind to this corner, right? And what I believe happened is this level of nether rack right there, I need to clear that out and then half slab that. So I think what I really need is I believe my, I need to change my half slab. Uh, whoa, 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 I was afraid that was gonna happen. Let me get back in here. <laughs> so I need to, I just need to get rid of this level of netherrack right there. 
and then half slab the layer below it. So go, I need to shift this down one more block so that what I'm standing on here isn't pathfindable. Like isn't, they can't use that for pathfinding because I believe they still can because this is the top of the space that needed to be cleared out. So I think I need to go one more deep and then half slab that to make it non-spawnable. The other thing is, is my beautiful base here that I, that I built is in the pathfinding area. So I believe that is also an issue. And maybe this this is the activator for for the spawner. Um, it's now going off lava, so this disables it with the light. This is also in that big area, that 10 by 10. So I think I need to also clear that out. So those are the two things I think that are causing that to happen. And what actually is interesting is when you go out and you come back in like this, what you end up, what ends up happening is they're like, Hey dude, what's up? And they just all flood in. So it's like you give them a chance to update their pathfinding. And I, you know, I know I've, I know there's a thing with if they become aggro on you and it messes up their pathfinding and so on and so forth. But I don't think that's happening. Um, I have no reason to believe that's happening. I don't think they can see me here. I haven't had any of them fire at me or do anything weird. Um, so I, that, that I, I just need to figure it out. See, I, I originally thought that was happening. I originally thought, oh yeah, they're trying to pathfind, they're getting stuck and oh, it's backing up the system. But I, I've seen enough of them where that hasn't always been the case. So it's like, there's something else going on and I believe it's the pathfinding. I believe I have too many blocks here in that 10 by 10 square um, that need to be cleared out. I think that's what it comes down to. So I have to rebuild all this and put it down lower, which is going to be fun. So <laughs> hopefully that will fix this issue. So now we have a proper area to do all of our enchanting here at the, at the blaze spawner. The, we shifted it down one on the half slabs, like I'd mentioned, where it used to be right here. Now we're down one so that we are for sure having our platform here outside of a pathfindable space for the blaze. But we still have the same general overall problem I've noticed, which is when we're here, this is this is where, where we do our killing now. When we're here, we still get that random chance that they bunch up. And what I and what and another thing I did too is I, I if you listen to uh, some of the research out there about these pathfinding that the increase, it used to be, these used to be here. Like I never had these two extra blocks for pathfinding. These two extra columns are these two extra columns, but it's supposed to increase the chance of them being able to pathfind over here for the farther ones over there, because now you're putting pathfinding spaces right here rather than cutting it off to only being right here. So increase supposed to increase, but that still didn't help. What, what I end up seeing is it seems like if I'm, if I kill the blaze, like, instantly as they come in here and just kind of sit here and you know maybe i use an auto clicker or whatever just to kind of sit here and do it they bunch up very quickly up here but if i let them come in here and then i wait until the they start dying off from mob cramming and then i kill them it works perfectly fine so i don't know if there is some mechanic in their pathfinding or in their behavior that forces them to group uh when when finding or something because or to maybe stay away from where blaze died I, I don't know what the mechanic may or may not be but i can't find it anywhere but i do know that works so i i use an auto clicker when i sit here and, and do this and what i did with the auto clicker is instead of sitting here and just clicking every second or two seconds whatever it was now what i do is is it takes about two two and a half minutes for this to get its up to its mob um cramming capability and so i wait two and a half minutes and then i click three times so Usually within that two and a half minutes, the mob cramming takes down their health where it's just a one click kill, but sometimes not. So that's why I do three clicks, one, two, three. And it, that, that does it perfectly fine. And, and it prevents it from jamming up up there. So I don't know why that is it's kind of interesting, but we got our silk touch pickaxe back, which is awesome. And now we, and we do, if you notice that we do have mending on it. You might be thinking, well, and, and I have mending on my sword too. You might be thinking, well, you don't have a f auto fisher. You don't have a raid farm. How how'd you get that mending book? Well, I did do a little bit of on during the break during cuts. I did do a little bit of uh, villagers 
with of trading with my villager, villager spawner and all that. But it's not. You know, I messed up. I lost the men mending book. Uh, zombie kind of killed my mending book. I, you know, it happens. <laughs> but anyways, um, so yeah, we we have a proper place here now to finally enchant. We have all of our things. We need to. Um, I forgot to put iron in my ender chest, but we need to put get some iron down here so that we can make an anvil. But we're going to finish off this episode with doing an enchantment. Let's see what we can get. Uh, see if we can get anything good. Ooh, a loyalty. Which, uh, a loyalty through, I guess we'll take it. And then our next enchantment. I always love doing this, just kind of putting in another book to see what our ne next one is. Protection of three. Uh, I don't know if that's worth it. Oh, feather falling, though. We will take a feather falling one. I always take feather falling. Um... When it, even when it's on the lower enchantments, just because I like to build up those feather falling uh, books to be up higher ones. It's just, feather falling and is really the only one I do it with because I haven't been able to get a feather falling four, and I don't know if it's possible on the thirty levels. I've only seen feather falling in the top two uh, tiers of enchantments, so I always take them and and I just build the books up from from low to get to feather falling four, and I do have that. So that's gonna go ahead and conclude today in this episode so i thank you guys all for watching if you liked anything go ahead and leave a comment like subscribe if you're not already because if you're this far in the episode and you're not subscribed that's kind of a little weird so anyways see you guys later bye